Hey everyone, it's Sophie. I know it's kind of a change of scene, but it's like nine o'clock at night here, so obviously outside lighting was not gonna work. Today I will be showing you my best calculator tricks that I have ever learned for the PSAT, SAT, ACT, and even just for school for math class, so really anything here. If you're hearing some weird noises, it's because my brother is wailing on the harmonica downstairs. So who needs background music when you have siblings? Let's just get started. I have my whole list right here, and I'm just gonna start with the equation solver. So this is probably one that you're familiar with if you're a junior or a senior, but I realized that a lot of my younger friends, like freshmen and sophomores, didn't really know this. By the way, I'm using the TI-84+. Plus. It looks like this. I'm pretty sure it's a standard, at least in Texas. It's what we all have here. Um, I know that the SAT and the ACT allow it. If you're in calculus, you might have the platinum whatever. It's like TI-89 or something like that. And I'm pretty sure the SAT doesn't let you use that one. So this one is just like safe for any test or school or whatever. Um, I'm pretty sure it's a standard throughout and what most people use, so that's what I'll be using here. If you don't happen to have this calculator, I'm sure you'll be able to emulate some of the stuff, maybe not more of the specific uh, programs and that sort of thing, but there are other ways where you can emulate it on other calculators. So let's get started. My first tip, I'll be talking about the equation solver, and I will actually show you how to do it like by actually recording the calculator. But for the equation solver, if you're on this calculator right here, what you do, you turn it on first, that's a good idea. And then let's say you can use this for really anything. If you have a really long, complicated equation that you can set equal to zero, it has to have one side equal to zero, and you wanna solve it out, and you don't wanna to have to do all the work, you can do that with the equation solver, it'll do it all for you. If you have a quadratic formula and you're trying to find roots, it'll do that as well. It's a pretty handy tool to use. And the way you access that is you go to math, and then you click alpha, the little green button, alpha b so basically you click math alpha apps and then it'll pop up i already put a quadratic equation there because i was showing my friends how to use it so i've just plugged in here you should get something like this and it's a zero equals let's say equation solver at the top i just put in a quadratic formula because like whatever <laughs> a quadratic equation and then so once you've plugged in everything you know it doesn't have to be quadratic it can be any equation with one variable that's set equal to zero um you click enter and then it'll pull you up to this screen and it'll say x equals something. So this basically just means that it wants you to guess a certain number. I always pick something that might not be the answer. Like I think I do, sometimes I do three. I used to do three, but three is often an answer. So it's not the best one to use. Sometimes I'll do like 1.3 if that's what I'm gonna do right here, 1.3. And then don't mess with the thing it says bound below. Don't mess with that, just leave it be. And then in order if you click enter nothing will happen so what you have to do is you have to click alpha enter because if you see in the little green it says solve um i'm gonna go back up to my x equals 1.3 when you're moused onto the x thing alpha enter and then look at that x equals one so i know one is one of the roots of my equation obviously this is a really simple quadratic equation you'd probably get the answer faster by just factoring it unless you're like a calculator wizard and you just type it out super fast another way you can use it let's say i'm gonna do uh, some random equation I'm gonna do the square root of 125x, close parentheses, I'm just making this up, um, plus 16x squared minus 2. Um, I'm just gonna do my same 1.3, whatever, alpha solve, and it's gonna think about it, and it gives me this tiny little number. But that's what x is, it just solved it for you. So I just made that one up, so obviously it's got a messy number. But yeah, that's how you can use the equation solver. It is super helpful and really awesome. Next up on my list, I have the... Oh, this isn't really a like button kind of problem where it's more of a strategy. When in doubt, graph it out. I'm a rhyming genius. This is really useful because SAT will usually have the problems where there are two systems of equations and that sort of thing. You're supposed to find the places where they intersect, just to find the solutions. It's really easy to do. All you do is go into your y equals right here, plug in one equation on the top, plug in the other equation in y2, put in the graph, see where they intersect. It can even be useful if you don't necessarily have two equations or if you have a problem that's talking about a parabola and it wants you to find the zeros. Something like that, really simple. Speaking of a parabola and finding the zeros, um, I'm gonna plug in x squared minus 5x. Let's see, so that would be minus 6 plus 1 minus 5x minus 6. Okay, my new equation, I'm plugging in x squared minus 5x minus 6. And then I'm gonna click a little button here for graph. Usually for the window, I just do negative 10, 10, negative 10, 10. If you need to fix that, just go to your little window button. It's right there and you can just plug it in. Um, 
going back to my graph and it is graphing it, it looks like this. So you're like, okay, that's all well and good, but I really don't wanna to have to zoom in and count those all out. This one's kind of easy. If it was a more complicated problem, you'd be like, okay, that's like 1.27. There's no way I can see that just by looking at it. So what you can do is you can use this little button here. It's called trace. You can do lots of things with trace. Um, what I'm gonna do here is second trace and then it says calculate. So your second trace button, uh, you can do tons of things with this. I might even make a whole video about the trace functions because they're super, super helpful. But for right now, we wanna see the zeros of the equation. So you're gonna mouse down to two, which is zero. So I'm gonna click on that. It says left bound. What does that even mean? Fear not. So I'm mousing sideways until I am up and above on the left side of my first zero. Enter. Now it's gonna say right bound. So I'm gonna mouse down until I'm on the right side of my first zero. Enter, it's gonna say guess, doesn't mean anything, just press enter again, and then my zero, x equals negative one. Awesome, how great. Um, this is another one where you could get this by factoring, but if they give you some really wonky or strange equation, you can use the zero function, it will do the exact same thing on the second zero. So that's the way that you can find the zeros of the equation, because zeros are also solutions of equations, so if you have some kind of funky graph and you need to see where it intersects the x-axis, this is a super good way where you can figure that out really fast. When in doubt, graph it out. I actually will probably make a whole other video about graphing stuff, because I think that that can be really useful for test stuff, SAT, ACT, math class, graphing is just awesome. Okay. My next thing is, I'm oh, sorry, I'm my list right here. <laughs> my next thing is the fraction button. So this is something that some of you are probably familiar with. Um, if SAT gives you a question like, I'm gonna do one over 18, if they want you to add a bunch of fractions. And you can do that in your calculator, you know, one over 18, I'm just making this up, plus one over 27, plus, that's not gonna be a random number, is it? Plus one over nine, whatever. Those are all numbers. supposed to know. So then you get this and you're like, okay, well that doesn't really help me because I'm trying to find you know, fractions. So have no fear if all the answers are given you in fractions. You go to math, first one right there is frac, math one frac, enter, click enter again, and it'll give you a nice fraction, 11 over 54. So you don't have to do any least common denominator stuff the calculator works to do for you. This is really simple, easy trick. So, you know, just a kind of nice one-off for your test stuff. Okay, next one. Oh, log base. So if any of you are familiar with logs, I mean, I'm sure you are, but if you're a sophomore, you might not be, at least in Texas, we don't really do them until late sophomore year. Logarithms, there's a button to do it on your calculator. You have the log button, which is just right here, um, but logs are automatically base 10 on the calculator. There's also LN, so log base E. The thing is, if you have a lot of problems and you're trying to solve it out and your log is not base 10, which it likely won't be, then you're kind of stuck. You're like, what do I do? You have to do the whole conversion thing, which is kind of boring and lame and time consuming. So what you can do instead is you can click alpha F2. So the way that you can get a custom log base where you can put in the log base yourself, you're gonna click alpha and then you're gonna click F2 and a whole system of commands will come up. Um, what I want to do is go all the way down to five. It says log base right there. Click on that bad boy. And then it'll show a little blinking thing where you can put in the log base that you want yourself. So let's say I want log base 21 of nine. I'm completely making this up. So I have long forgotten how to do log. So I don't even know if this is gonna be a real answer. Click on that and look at that. We get 0.72 something, awesome. So basically all that lets you do is just put in a custom log base that's not base 10 or base E and that's really helpful. Oh, next one is derivative. So I know a lot of sophomores and probably juniors as well may not be familiar with derivative. Basically derivative is slope. One really helpful tool, I don't really know if the SAT will ask you this. Um, I feel like all the slope questions I have in the SAT are like two points and then you just do y1, y2, x1, x2. Um, but if you ever for some reason need to find the slope of a point on a line, there's a function that'll do that. If you go math eight, It'll show this little D, D thing. Just put X, don't ask Y, just put X on the bottom. And then you can plug in your system equations. I'll do the one I did last time. It'll be X squared minus five X minus six. And let's say I wanna find the slope of the line at X equals two. I'm just making this up again. I have no idea what any of this is. And then I get negative one. So we know that the slope of the function at the point of two is negative one. So that's super helpful. I don't exactly know if you'd ever really need that for the SAT or ACT. I'm not quite sure if they test on that, but that is slope, rate of change, slash derivative. They all mean the same thing at one certain point. Okay, next up on my list is binomial PDF. Okay, I do not think 
that you will necessarily need this on the SAT or ACT. I am not quite sure if they ask a question like this. I feel like I saw one of them because we learned it in academic decathlon. And then I feel like they had a question like that on one of the tests and I was so happy because I was like, no, it is. So binomial PDF is a, a sort of a tool thing that you can use in very specific instances. So what binomial PDF does is it calculates probability of a certain event done a certain amount of times. Let me explain. So let's say you're shooting free throws and you have a 0.9 chance of getting the free throw, a 90% chance of getting it because you're a baller and you're just super good. So you have a 0.9% chance of getting it right, or rather 0.9, 90% chance of getting it right when you're doing your free throws. And maybe you're in a competition or something like that. And in order to win, you need to get 18 out of 20 free throws. And the SAT, ACT math teacher might ask you, what is the probability that you will get exactly 18 out of the 20 free throws and be able to win the competition? Like what's the bare minimum you'd have to do? And so ordinarily you'd have to write out this kind of long complicated thing with um, a combination and exponents and stuff like that. It's probably good how to know that just regularly, but there's an easy way to do that on their calculator. Okay, so you're gonna go to second distribution, which is the button that says VARS right there. And then you're gonna go all the way down to binomial PDF, which is A, you have to kind of go down a little bit. I'm gonna click enter. So trials, we said 20, right, for ours. P is probability that you'll be able to get it, so 0.9, make sure it's in point and not percentage. And then X value, that is how many you have to get. We said 18, enter, paste it. So it's gonna put up that little thing, click enter, 0.28. So there's a 0.28% chance that you'll get all 18. That seems pretty reasonable to me, or not 0.28%. 28% chance, 0.28. That seems pretty reasonable to me given the stuff. So, you know, you can kind of rationalize and be like, okay, that makes sense. So I feel like I've only seen one of those problems and I've taken the SAT and ACT multiple times. I really, that's kind of like a fringe thing. If you don't understand it, don't worry about it. It's probably not gonna come up on your test. So just, you'll be good, don't worry about it. Next one I have is storing. This is another super easy, simple, trick, especially good for guess and check. Really all you really, y'all have probably done this before. What you can do is you can store a value in for X and then just plug it into equations. So let's say I want to store in negative one as my X value. So I'm gonna put in negative one, this little button store, it shows up as an arrow, and then I'm gonna put in as X. Press enter and then it'll show negative one. So if you plug in X, and then enter, it'll come up as negative one. So now you have x stored in this negative one. So let's do our old equation. We'll do x squared minus five x minus six. I've just plugged this right into the home button, no graphing or anything. Enter, and then I get zero. So you know when x is negative one, it comes out as zero. So the storing function is really helpful. Let's say that um, you wanted to find like what x value comes out as like negative two or something like that and you would no idea how to solve it whatsoever you can just plug and chug by putting in the answer choices storing them as x plugging them in and repeat because it's really easy oh no i put in my graph it's really easy so let's say i want three is all my interest i just three store as x enter and then i can just mouse right back up to the old equation enter enter and look at that, I get negative 12. So it's really easy to um, guess and check, plug and chug with the store function. So another simple, easy hack that you can just integrate into your math class, everyday life, testing strategies, a really good one. And my very last one that I'm gonna show you today, my eighth tip, sorry, this is gonna be so long, is uh, how to actually plot graphs. So sometimes they'll give you values and they might not give you a graph and show it visually. So this is really helpful if you're gonna want to, if you're more of a visual person and you wanna be able to see what the function's gonna look like. So I'm just gonna plug in some random things. Um, I'm going to stat right here, stat, edit, and then it's gonna give you something, let me clear my old junk I actually had in here. It's gonna give you L1, L2, L3, basically L1 is your X, L2 is your Y. So let's say I'm going, it's like every minute or something, the percent of bacteria in a tank increases. I just completely made it up. So I'm gonna do minutes one, enter, two, enter, three, four, five and so on until my L1 looks like this. And let's say my bacteria is increasing, so I'm gonna go two, four, six, eight, 10. So wow, oh, so awesome. <laughs> then what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to your Y1, make sure you've cleared out if you have anything in there. Um, so if you wanna be able to visually see what you've plugged in, you're gonna mouse up until you're on plot one, click enter. When you mouse off, it'll still kind of be highlighted, so that's how you know your plot is activated. Then if you go to your graph, 
you can see the little function you made. How cool. Now, if you really want to be super extra, you can actually figure out the equation of the line made by this graph. So what I'm going to do, if I want to calculate the line, I'm going to go to stat. I'm going to mouse over to calc because I'm calculating. Makes sense. Then I'm going to go down to linear regression. So this depends. I know that mine is linear because it was just increasing by factor of one and the other one by factor of two. If you know that yours are quadratic or the logarithmic they, or exponential, there are different ones to do that. There's linear, there's quadratic, if you mouse down, there's linear, exponential, power, sign. Um, I know mine is linear, so I'm just going to do linear. Usually you can kind of look at the data and get an idea of what it'll be. Um, so let's do linear regression. I know my x and y are L1 and L2 because we put those in. Um, frequency list, don't mess with. Um, store regression equation. So if you wanted to be able to put this into your y thing, which I do, I'm going to go vars, y vars, function, y1, put that in there. Basically what that means is that it's going to calculate the equation of my line and then it's going to put it into the y equals for me. And I'll show you how that looks in a second. I'm going to mouse down and click calculate. Um, it actually gives you the equation right there. So y equals ax plus b. I know it's just 2. Is the equation that I made is y equals 2x. Shocking. So then now that I have that, that's really helpful. It'll solve out the whole equation for you and tell you the formula. Oh yeah, that's another really good thing. If they give you a bunch of points, um, it'll find the equation for you. So that's cool. Um, I'm going to go into y equals. I It stored it like it said it would right there. And if I go to my graph, it'll actually draw the line for me and show it right through the points. So that's super helpful. Um, you can do that with quadratics. You can do that with powers and exponentials. That is kind of it for my calculator tricks. Going through all these, I realize it might be kind of confusing. So if you need any help with like any explanations, if you want me to like work through problems or something like that, I'd be glad to. Um, I actually going through this calculator, I realized I kind of thought of some more things that I can do. So I can totally do that in another video if you like these and you'd like to see more. If you have any questions, any suggestions for videos, please let me know. I'm working on the ACT science thing. I'm trying to find a time to be able to record that kind of video. So uh, it'll be really great. I'm really excited for that. If you have any questions, please let me know. Thanks for 50 subs. Uh, that's pretty darn awesome. Thank you guys so much. I'm really glad that you are enjoying my stuff. And just letting you know, I've submitted some of my college apps, so college decision reaction video is probably going to be underway pretty soon when I start hearing back from colleges. So, I mean, it, I'll post it when, like, all my college apps and stuff are done um, and my get all my acceptances, rejections, waitlists, whatever. So, you, obviously, the whole video won't come for a while, but I am going to be starting to hear news soon, so that's really awesome, and I will keep you guys posted for that. So let me know down in the comments if you like anything, have any questions, want anything new, and thank you so much. Bye!